part three of the scenario-based training masterclass, some quick tips to help you as an instructor develop better scenarios. Today, we're talking about layering for scenario-based training. Here we go. All right, guys, so a quick tip for today. If you want to work on your scenarios to make them more realistic, to elicit different responses, then add layers. Now I say add layers because I'm a really big believer that when you are working with a beginning student or someone who's new to scenario-based training, reality-based training, whatever you want to call it, when someone is working through this and they're developing their skills, you should strip your scenarios back to be as basic as possible until they build competence, until they build confidence, until they're able to elicit the responses you're looking for. So that might mean a simple verbal interaction. It might mean a simple observation of a bladed stance. It might be a simple observation of someone reaching for a waistband. The student recognizes that they pull the right action, scenario over, we're done, right? That's as simple as it needs to be when we're getting started. Let them build some positive reps. Now, as we start to move beyond that, and they can do that reliably, and for a lot of people, that will be like one or two reps and they're done, right? They're ready to add some levels to it. So now we can add a bit more context. Now we can add a little bit more conversation. Now we can add some relationship data. Maybe we can add some backgrounds. We can have some passive bystanders. Maybe we can add in some friendly backgrounds. So it's maybe instead of uh, you're walking in a dark alley, which why were you doing that? But you're walking in a dark alley and someone confronts you and they've got a hand in their belt. Uh, that's fine. Uh, but now we're going to add in you are walking somewhere dark with your small child. Does that change your response? And now, if you remember back in video one, we talked about assessing uh, or deciding what we're assessing, what we're trying to make people better at. You start throwing in variables like a, a vulnerable child or a bystander or something like that. And all of a sudden, we're no longer just assessing the verbal skills, the situational awareness skills, but we're also assessing decision making. Are you going to make a decision in that moment that gets your child killed? That this is a critical component of self-defense, self-protection, violence prevention and management, whatever terminology you like to use. Add in those layers, change the environment, change the context, change the time of day, change the people that are there, changing the relationship with the offender. Okay? Is this a random bystander, random person you've never met before? Or is this a relative? Is this a colleague at work? Is this a Christmas party? Has there been alcohol involved? Do I have reason to believe there's drugs involved? Am I in an area where police will be close by? Or am I in an area where I have no backup, no police, I'm literally going to be sprinting for my life for an indefinite period of time until I can get out of the situation. Add all those pieces deliberately, systematically to elicit a desired training response. Not just because it's fun, not just because you want to mess with people, not just because you want to humble people, but because you want them to develop skills in a specific area. That's the advantage of layering. Start basic as they get competent, build and build and build and build add on different pieces until you get to the desired training outcome. And therefore you can have one scenario and you can have 32 different variations of that one scenario that all have slightly different training outcomes, slightly different adaptations, slightly different skill set developments. And there's nothing wrong with rerunning it and rerunning it and rerunning it until you get the result you want, just like you would with any other type of physical skills practice. I hope you enjoyed that, guys. If you're after more of this sort of content, make sure you check out the Managing Violence Masterclass in Cambridge and in Oxford coming up in March and April 2022. We are running the first ever Managing Violence Certified Instructor Program in those two locations. There will also be an online instructor cohort uh, for those of you that are not in the UK or maybe can't make those dates, then uh, make sure you check that out as well. All those details will be down in the description below. Until then, stay safe, be a good instructor, help your students survive better.